joining us now with her 2024 outlook for the economy and markets is FS Investments Chief U.S. Economist Laura Raim. Well, Laura, let's start with one of the big questions on many investors' minds right now. Will we see a recession in 2024? Well, I'm happy to say that a recession is no longer my base case. Last year, 2023, I think will go down as a massive swing and a miss for economists who started the year largely expecting a recession. I know I did. A lot of alarm bells were going off that historically precede recession, and it made me really concerned that that was going to happen last year. But I'm happy to say there are some times where it's good to be wrong, and this is one of those times. We actually ended up experiencing strong growth of 3.1% last year, well over our potential, with a lot of momentum carried through to start this year. Yeah, I mean, to your point, looking back, 2023 was quite the reversal. Uh, The start of 2023 brought calls for the most widely anticipated recession in history and ended with a Q4 rally and mounting optimism for a soft landing. Could you elaborate a little bit more on your expectations now and why such a, a reversal that we've seen? Well, I think you're hitting on one of the key words that we need to think about, expectations. And I want to circle back to that because First of all, growth this year is looking good. The U.S. consumer is just that big engine. Household spending accounts for 70% of the economic growth, and the outlook is solid. I think we're going to still be powered by real wage and income gains. It's important to recognize that that second engine that powered uh, household consumption last year, like a dual engine Uh, that gave us extra momentum was excess savings, that second engine may be winding down today. But given that we have a strong labor market and solid wage growth, I think there's still a good foundation for growth going forward in that household spending sector. And then you look at other areas of the economy, like business investment, which remains really solid. We are starting to see some impact from higher interest rates come into play. But again, looking ahead, I think we're going to see growth there, even though it may not be quite as strong as last year. And finally, government spending provided massive tailwind to growth last year. This year, I think it's going to be a small positive in the beginning of the year, but shifting towards the end of the year, it may move to neutral. All that's to say the outlook for 2024, my growth forecast is around 1.5%. It's a solid pace of growth, it is going to be a slowdown from what was just a pretty unsustainable pace last year. I've also heard some people saying, you know, maybe inflation really was transitory after all, and now it seems to be getting under control. Do you think that we can finally stop worrying about inflation or are markets potentially being too optimistic here? And if they are, what's the danger in that? You know, inflation still to me is a huge topic that drives not just the economy and Fed policy, but markets as well. And I feel like we could spend an entire half hour on inflation alone. I think when we look at how inflation's looking um, today and into the year, we've made enormous progress from that 9% peak in the middle of 2022. That doesn't mean that we can claim victory. It's important to recognize that Underneath the headlines, which have really improved, you're seeing really a divergence between sticky services inflation, but goods price deflation. I think of it like a car ride, Jenna. We've all got some kids back at home. When one kid is really acting up, even though you may get there, the car ride isn't as smooth. Before the pandemic, we had really well-behaved components of inflation that made the overall experience and ride of inflation very easy. Today, you're still seeing some of those uh, actors maybe being a little bit more um, out of control and still seeing some of the pieces that we put together to get that overall inflation picture look less well-behaved. I think we need to look even beyond household, um, the sort of CPI measure of inflation and look at things like wages which are still, I think, too high, especially higher than they were before the pandemic. And then other things like 
Um, the fact that there are now some rising tail risks to inflation, like shipping costs, that are starting to uh, look like they may bottom and move higher going forward. Building off of that, Laura, where does this leave us with uh, interest rates? So the interest rate picture we need to dissect, and we need to look at both short and long-term interest rates. The Fed is likely done raising rates. And this expectation that rate cuts are coming in 2024 is driving a lot of movement right now in the interest rate complex. In the short term, that is really dominated by Fed policy. And while I think the one or two Fed rate cuts in 2024 is likely, there's a huge gap between what the Fed is signaling and what the market is pricing in. To me, market expectations of five or six rate cuts is way too optimistic. I'm expecting surgical rate cuts in the second half of the year. And I think the Fed is going to start pushing back pretty strongly on rate cut expectations in this first quarter or the first half of the year. At the end of the day, that is really going to be the primary driver of short-term interest rates. So while those have peaked and the expectation is lower, markets may be too optimistic. But I want to also talk about long-term interest rates, which is being driven by other things besides the Fed. Looking in the second half of the year and even today, I think strong growth and supply dynamics mean that we may see long-term interest rates move within a wide band between three and a half and five percent. I think long-term interest rates could actually rise in the middle and second half of the year simply because we have so much public debt that needs to be refinanced. We've been ignoring supply dynamics for a while. That may finally come back into play in so far in 2024. So with markets hearing uh, double the interest rate cuts that the Fed has hinted at at its December meeting and everything else that we've discussed today, what are your uh, what's your outlook for different asset classes and where does this leave us heading into 2024? I think markets in the coming year are going to continue to be challenged on three fronts. Growth, income, and diversification are the building blocks for investors. But let's take those one at a time. In traditional markets, growth is there, but we usually access that through publicly traded equities, which are experiencing such high valuations at the start of the year, plus so much optimism built in. To me, we need to really think about accessing that through private strategies that get us to middle market lending and middle market growth as well as other areas where we can see, for example, multi-strategy um, equity investments, which give us a little bit more stability in that growth bucket. I think second, we need to think about income because while short-term interest rates may have peaked, I think that fixed income is going to continue to be very volatile. Remember, cash seemed like a great alternative at 5% back when we were really worried about recession. But today, with a fairly solid growth outlook, we need to recognize that high yield, private credit offer high single digit or double digit returns at a time when default rates are likely going to stay well within historic norms. There's more places to look on the income component. And then finally, diversification needs to be a focus. Look for private investments with steady with steady NAVs or steady returns, or again, those multi-asset strategies that give us the ballast that fixed income used to be in a portfolio. That high correlation between stocks and bonds, it's really at a multi-decade high, needs to be addressed. Well, Laura, I wish we had time for more, but we better leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us today. And thank you to everyone watching. Once again, that was FS Investments Chief U.S. Economist Laura Rehm. And I'm Jenna Dagenhart with Asset TV.